Hey everybody! You may want to look away if you're a little squeamish because what I've got under here is pretty gnarly. You see, the other day I roasted a whole hog porchetta on the rotisserie and it was delicious. And I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video. However, there were some spare parts after butchering that pig. And so today, in the spirit of not letting anything go to waste, I'm going to make a delicious head cheese, which is indeed made of head, that some of you are going to love. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the parts that I'm using today. Of course I have the head which I've taken a bone saw and sliced down the middle and took out the brains and I'll use those for something else. They're not really my favorite but I'll eat them with some toast or something. Then I've got the four feet which are going to add a lot of collagen to the broth and that's important because that's going to turn to gelatin and this is technically a meat jelly. I've also got the tongue and then I bought some other tongues to add into that because they're going to add some nice meaty bulk and I really love the flavor of the tongue. So now I'm going to take these parts, I'm going to make a brine, and then I'm going to cure these for a couple of days in the refrigerator. The brining and or curing is optional in this recipe. I could completely skip this and go straight to cooking those parts. However, I do recommend at least brining because I think it adds a really nice flavor to the meat. I'm going to add some cure so the meat's also going to retain a nice rosy color after it's cooked. So I'm going to make a very basic brine starting with one gallon of water to which I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of salt, one half cup of sugar, and I'm going to cure this so I'm also going to add 42 grams of pink curing salt. What I'm talking about is this pink curing salt number one also known as prog powder number one. I'm not talking Himalayan pink salt, that's not gonna get the job done. So I'm gonna add the cure and then thoroughly stir this until everything is completely dissolved. Now my salt and sugar is all dissolved and we're ready to put in the pig parts. And so I'm just gonna drop them right in there. And we need to make sure that these are completely submerged during the curing. So after I get them in there, I'll put this plate on there, push them down, and this goes out into the refrigerator for two days. After a couple of days in that brine, my parts are now cured and we're ready to move on to cooking. So I'm going to strain off this brine and then I'm going to rinse the parts in some nice fresh water and then we'll set this to simmer in. You want to pick a pot that's big enough that you can fit all your parts down in there and then completely cover them with water plus maybe another two inches of water over that. And so after you got that set up, it's time to add your flavorings. Uh, for me, I'm going to add a couple of bay leaves, I got three bay leaves few cloves of garlic. I've got a little bundle of thyme that I tied together with a piece of string that's just gonna make it easier to pluck out later. And then for a little bit of that aromatic I have just about five or ten allspice berries. And maybe a tablespoon or two of black peppercorns. Now you can get real creative with your seasonings here. You could just use straight pickling spice. I've seen that done a lot and it tastes great. Or you could use star anise, all kinds of different aromatics and go a completely different flavor. So that's really up to you. Get creative and have fun with it. Now we'll add the water, cover it up, and then some, and then some more. That looks good. Now I'm going to add a big pinch of salt, not a ton because this is going to reduce way down and I don't want it getting too salty because those pig parts are also brined and kind of salted already. I'm only going to add a couple of teaspoons of salt to this for now because in the end we're going to reduce it way down and I'm not sure how salty that's going to be at the moment. So now we'll bring this up to a boil and then reduce this to a very gentle simmer for the next three hours or until those parts get nice and tender. And I'll occasionally come in here and scrape the foam off the top. Things are coming up to temp. I got some foam starting to gather, but I almost forgot. I want to add in one teaspoon of white vinegar. After that nice three hour simmer, I can check these with either a knife or a fork. Make sure they're nice and tender and just the way I want them. And now I'll take all of the meat out of there. 
I'll strain the broth through a cheesecloth And now I gotta get these beautiful little piggy bits cooled down enough that I can pull the meat off the bones. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this out into the refrigerator. And in the meantime, I'm gonna reduce this stock down until it gets nice and sticky. So probably at least by half. Now that that's all cooled down, I wanna pick the meat off of those bones. And I also wanna peel or cut the white bumpy outer skin off of the tongue. So it's just nice. Beautiful red meat on the inside there. And then I cut that into some nice slices. Oh yeah, that's some good looking tongue. Now I boiled that broth way down, up to three quarters of the way down, so it'll get nice and thick when it cools off. Now a good way to test this is to put a little bit, a tablespoon or so, in a bowl, pop that in the freezer or the refrigerator until it cools all the way down, and then you'll know how thick it is when it's done. You want it to be thicker than a jello so you can slice it, but not super rubbery like some ballistics gel or something. As that's boiling down, sample it here and there and customize it to your taste. I like to add some more of the fresh herbs and spices just to give it a little fresh pop before I pour it into the molds. You can use whatever shape molds you like for this. I'm using these little loaf pans, but whatever you use, you want to make sure and line it with a little plastic wrap before you fill it. That way everything will come out nice and clean and easy. Now I'm going to take out about enough meat to fill one of the molds. Usually I'll just do this all at once, but I'm going to do a couple of different flavors here today. So I'm just going to take out enough to do one at a time. So I'll get that meat cut up a little bit and now pour in some of that broth enough just to kind of get everything soaked a little bit. I don't want to drown it in there. I'll stir that around and now it's time to flavor this. And what I'm going to use today is a little bit of fresh parsley. I've got some more fresh thyme leaves and a little orange zest which tastes really nice in here. Now we'll just stir all of that together. Give that a little taste. That's going to take a little bit more salt. And now we'll just fill that mold up. Kind of tap it down a little bit. Get it nice and level in there. And then top that off with some more of that broth. Taparoo, get everything all nice and soaked. And again, top it right off. Now you can also make a really nice layered version of this. I'm going to start by putting in a nice layer of just those tongue slices. And then I'll cover that with a little bit of the broth. Now I'll put in a layer of that shredded meat. It's all seasoned with the orange zest and the parsley and the thyme. Get that all cut up pretty fine. And I'll put a nice thick layer of that on there. Pack it down. Now, I'll add in a little bit more of that broth to get everything nice and saturated. And top that with another layer of those tongue slices. And there we have it. Now, I'll just cover this up with some plastic wrap and pop this out into the fridge for a little while. After about an hour, I'll come in and put another tin on top and weigh that down to compress everything. If I put that on right away, some of that liquid is just going to run out and over the sides and make a big mess. So let it start to set up a little bit first. Now this is completely cold. It's been actually out there for a couple of days. Now it's time to unmold it and see how we did. See, it should pop right out of it. Perfect. Oh, wow. Take a look at that. <laughs> Looks feels very solid looks full of tongue <laughs> actually looks very pretty to me <laughs>
how we did. Now these days, this sort of thing is pretty much exclusively served on a board, probably with some other meats and cheeses, and of course some tiny, tiny fancy pickles, and a little mustard. But if you don't have a wooden cutting board, you could probably just head out back and grab a 2x4, and I'm sure that'd be very hip these days. But, on to the tasting, because that's what's important. Now, if you take a look, it's held together really nice. This is the fancier, mostly tongue one I made, but there is a layer of the head meat through the middle. So, let's give this a try. Of course, we'll put a little bit of mustard on there. The fancier, the better. Mmm. Mmm. My. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and try to tell you that everyone's gonna love this. But if you do like head cheese, this is a great recipe. It's really decadent, of course, because of all the extra tongue I put in there. But those orange and that thyme almost give it, I don't know, sort of a festive flavor. It's very good. And it would be a great addition to any charcuterie board. <laughs> well, I do really hope you try this. It's a very simple and very delicious recipe. I can't say for sure if everybody's gonna love it, but if you do, and maybe even if you don't, please like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching!